You've seen the jets take off. You've heard the roar of engines. But there's one raw, brutal force of the U.S. Navy that most people never even think about. 30,000 pounds of forged steel crashing into the ocean floor like a thunderbolt. This is the U.S. Navy's anchor drop. And when it happens at full speed, it's not just intense. It's violent, precise, and absolutely essential for survival at sea. We're talking about anchors designed to stop cities that float. A fully loaded supercarrier weighs over 100,000 tons. That's more than the weight of 400 Statue of Liberties. And to hold that still, in high winds, in rough seas, or even during combat, you need an anchor and chain that can take a beating. So what does the Navy use? A 30,000-pound anchor connected to a 1440-foot chain made of high-strength steel links as thick as a grown man's thigh. This isn't a tool. It's a weaponized tether, and it's operated by a complex multi-room system designed to perform one of the most dangerous mechanical maneuvers on a ship. You can't just throw a 15-ton anchor overboard. If the brake system fails, the whole chain could whiplash, tearing through the ship and anyone unlucky enough to be nearby. That's why the Navy runs anchor drop tests. Controlled high-stress drills where the anchor is released, caught, braked, and reset multiple times. All to make sure nothing fails when lives are on the line. The tests go down to 30 fathoms. That's 180 feet deep. The Wildcat drums act as brakes, slowing the fall, allowing just enough give before locking down. If it stops within a precise margin, the anchor is certified for real deployment. If not, the chain could snap under stress. And a snapped anchor chain isn't just expensive, it's deadly. Every link in the anchor chain is a potential failure point. Salt water eats steel. Tension warps metal. Repeated friction wears down links like sandpaper on bone. That's why crews perform manual checks. Link by link, bolt by bolt. Sometimes it's done dockside with the whole chain stretched out on the pier like a steel serpent. Other times, it's done in tight, humid metal chambers deep inside the ship while at sea. One overlooked crack, one worn shackle pin, and that ship could drift into danger, smashing into reefs, hitting friendly vessels, or losing all stability in a storm. This isn't just maintenance, it's survival. While the anchor holds the ship in place, there's another beast of a system up top that controls chaos in the skies. It's called the arresting gear, and it's how a fighter jet going 150 miles per hour is stopped in under 400 feet, on a deck that's moving, pitching, and barely the size of a football field. Here's how it works. A steel cable stretches across the flight deck. As the aircraft lands, its tail hook snags that cable. And in that instant, a hydraulic system underneath the deck absorbs the energy like a mechanical sponge. That means in a matter of seconds, thousands of pounds of kinetic energy are stopped cold. No explosion, no skidding, just raw, engineered force. And it doesn't just save the pilot's life. It saves every plane, every crew member, and every mission on board. The Navy may have mastered this tech at sea, but back on land, the Air Force has its own version. It's called the BAK-12, or Barrier Arresting Kit, and it's designed for one thing. Emergency stops during landings that go wrong. A steel line is raised above the runway. Just like on a ship, the tail hook on the aircraft grabs the line. Because when an F-16 comes in with brake failure, there's no second chance. It might not get the glory of the flight deck, but deep within the ship, the anchor room is one of the most dangerous places on board during deployment, nicknamed by some sailors as the chain locker of doom. This space sees tens of thousands of pounds of chain whipping back and forth, echoing like thunder against the steel hull. You don't just stand there and watch. One wrong step, one loose sleeve, and the chain will drag you to your death in seconds. That's why every anchor operation is performed with full protective gear, spotters, and an unspoken level of respect. You're not just operating a machine, you're commanding a monster. If you think anchors are boring, you've never seen one fail. Now imagine that happening with a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier packed with fuel, weapons, and jets. Without an anchor holding it steady during a storm, a carrier can begin to drift. 
That puts the entire ship in every sailor on board at the mercy of nature. That's why the U.S. Navy spares no effort in making sure anchor systems are overbuilt, overtested, and overtrained. When the ocean turns violent, those steel links are the last line of defense. In the Navy, practice isn't optional, it's policy. And that means full scale anchor drops, hoist drills, and system failure simulations. Done with real crew in real time. Every new sailor is drilled in, anchor release protocol, brake failure response, emergency chain, jettison procedures. Yes, you heard that right, emergency jettison. If the anchor chain gets stuck or starts to rip apart, there's a system to cut the chain loose entirely, a last resort to save the ship. And once it's cut, there's no getting it back until you're back in port and replacing a 30,000 pound anchor. That's not cheap. Imagine a medieval torture device. Now give it hydraulics, industrial steel teeth, and 20,000 PSI of pressure. That's the windlass. It's the muscle behind the anchor. And in an aircraft carrier, it spans multiple compartments. As it spins, it pulls the anchor chain back link by link. And any malfunction here can rip steel apart like tissue paper. That's why the Wildcat drums, the specialized gears that grip the chain, are inspected before every mission. If the Wildcat slips, the anchor could drop uncontrollably, tearing through decks like a guillotine. One sailor describes it as the loudest silence you'll ever hear. You're just praying nothing snaps. When that anchor hits the seabed, it's not just falling, it's digging in. Think of it like a grappling hook, but for 40 story skyscrapers floating in the ocean, the deeper the anchor embeds, the stronger the hold. But to achieve that, it must fall with calculated force, not too fast to risk breakage, not too slow to fail penetration. That's why the brake timing, chain length, and release speed are all managed down to fractions of a second. Because one miscalculation could mean the anchor just skips along the bottom, dragging uselessly. It's easy to look at an aircraft carrier and only see the jets, the afterburners, the launches, the landings. But what keeps that whole floating city alive? What keeps it from dying in a storm or drifting into enemy territory is a chain, a break, a hook, a group of sailors you never hear about. So the next time you see a Navy ship slicing through the sea, remember beneath that steel beast, hidden behind the roar of engines and the pride of the flag, there's a 30,000 pound anchor ready to drop at full speed, not just to stop the ship, but to anchor an entire mission. Make sure to like, subscribe, and drop a comment below if you want more deep dives into military tech that keeps the world's most powerful forces moving. Until next time.